Hey y'all, Data Guy here. Uh, and today I woke up just feeling a little, uh, little funny, a little silly. Um, so I decided I wanted to make a video uh, in the kind of tier list style of different SQL databases. Um, so this is just kind of a fun video. Where I'm gonna, you know, I will give some criteria for how I'm selecting it, but just want to give you kind of my opinions on where the different databases rank up. Um, and then maybe you, know, you can tell me I'm wrong in the comments below or whatever. Um, and then you know, hopefully this might help someone make a decision on which database they want to use. But above all else, I just kind of want to have fun with it. And I think this would be a cool video. Um, so category or kind of the criteria we're going for are ease of use, uh, scalability, integrations, um, and what's well, another good one? Oh, I guess we should go with cost as well. So that, that's a good kind of counterweight to the more expensive databases. Um, and so I am going to start this off with my personal favorite SQL database, Snowflake, which I am going to put at the M A or S, A or S, A or S. Let's decide. So Snowflake, it's really highly scalable, really easy to scale. Um, it has really great integrations with almost any other product. Uh, find it really easy to get data in or out of there, um, really simple, you know, versus other databases. I think it is pretty easy to use. Um, I think the only thing that would keep it from being an S is the cost because it is a little bit expensive at scale. Um, but I think the trade-offs with everything else actually make it an S tier. Um, so we're gonna put Snowflake uh, first up here as the S tier. And then to counterbalance, make sure you know that I'm not just going to sandbag this and give every single database uh, an A in hopes of a collaboration with them. We're going to put Oracle right down here at the F tier. Um, even though I started my career at Oracle, actually because I started my career at Oracle, I know exactly how much of a pain in the ass every single Oracle database is to use, manage, integrate with anything outside of Oracle. If you want to connect to an Oracle database to an external tool, good luck. Um, it, you're going to have to write a custom script. You're going to have to install all kinds of drivers. It is going to be the most rigid and breakable connection ever. Uh, Oracle has very few connections to anything outside of the Oracle ecosystem because they just want to lock you in. They want to get everyone on Oracle and using all Oracle. And the only reason they're still around is because you have so many big companies that can't move off of Oracle databases. Um, but they are truly terrible um, to use, manage. They're just, the interfaces are so antiquated. It's insane how bad, like they, they just put in zero effort in upgrading. It's like a new release every couple of years, despite them having a half a million people on their payroll, they can't push out any meaningful updates or upgrades to their core database products, other than slapping some AI, basic AI and ML optimization in there and calling it the autonomous database. So Oracle gets put there all the way down there on F tier. And next here we have a company I actually had the pleasure of meeting uh, at AWS reInvent, and that is Cockroach Labs. Um, and so kind of Cockroach's whole shtick is that, hey, we are a database that can survive no matter what, it's fault redundant, you have copies in other databases, it's fully distributed SQL. Um, and that gives you, you know, not only a lot of security, but also a lot of uh, scalability right out of the box. Um, obviously, you know, when you're trying to scale the, you know, replication of really large scale databases, doing that just, you know, with external tooling or trying to you know, develop your own methodology for preserving those snapshots can get really difficult. And so Cockroach, Cockroach has that built into it at the core because it is you know, at, distributed at its very base. You know, it, that it's a distributed SQL database management system. Um, so I'm gonna put that at B, -t B tier because I have found it, it's a little bit, I tried running it locally. I tried kind of playing around with it and I just, well, I did find it very useful. Um, it is a little bit, a little bit of a learning curve to actually kind of getting started with it. And that's just really true of any distributed computing system, um, just because, you know, the compl natural complexity that that introduces um, is pretty significant. Next, up here at A tier, we're going to put just good old open source Postgres SQL. Um, you know, it's not beautiful, the interfacing with it could use some work, uh, but it is, at the end of the day, really simple to connect to. Um, you, know, you can just host it on URL, have a port and boom connect into it. The syntax for, you know, saying, hey, I want to manipulate a certain table, which is, I find it really, you know, easy to just say, hey, database schema table, um, it's all, you know, just dot, dot, dot. Um, it is obviously really widely used. It's really easy to get set up locally. It is really easy to, you know, bring into production. I know the former head of astronomer, Ryan, uh, Rye Wheeler is 
coming out with his managed Postgres offering, uh, Tembo. So if you're interested in that, you should have to check him out. Um, but Postgres is been around for uh, so long for a good reason, and I do enjoy using it. It doesn't have some of the you know the cooler, flashier features that Snowflake has, but at the end of the day, it gets the job done, and that's what matters. And next up, we are going to have the Amazon Redshift database. Um, so you can see that represented by this kind of generic icon here. Um, and we're going to put that at a cool C tier. Um, so I don't much like the way of kind of managing things in Amazon because I feel like every Amazon like database you need to have then CloudWatch, you need to have a lot of services around it to actually make it useful. And they don't have a lot of the kind of functionality that you would need to interact with database built in. Um, you know, it, at the end of the day, it's, it's just a database. It's I wouldn't say it's really standout good or bad in its performance. It's, you know, really cheap and available for anyone that's using Amazon. It's pretty easy to spin one up. Um, my bugaboos just really come with the fact that I don't like connecting to it. I don't like the ecosystem. Actually, you know what? We'll put it up in a B tier. The more I talk about it, there's not enough negatives for it to qualify being down at C tier. Um, so we'll bring it up there to B. Um, and so next we have Microsoft SQL Server. Um, and so Microsoft SQL Server is almost as bad as Oracle databases, but I will give it the caveat of the newer SQL Server options uh, available on Azure are much easier to connect to and uh, you know just man manage, manipulate. Uh, I, I found the interface there is really easy to use. However, legacy on-prem SQL Server installs are the bane of my existence. Uh, every time I run into them in the wild, whether it be through work or just talking, like it's never something good that's like on there. It's you know something. Like, okay, we have to keep it. There, you know, there's no appetite to move off of that database. It's kind of just sitting there. It is is brutally antiquated and how you you know for, if it's an on-prem install, similar to Oracle. Uh, so I really, really do not love uh, Microsoft SQL Server. I don't think it's quite as bad as Oracle because I think. Microsoft has done a good job through Azure of kind of bringing it into the 21st century, and I hope they continue to work on it um, and you know just make it easier to use. But it's down there in the doldrums of D because on-prem and legacy installs are just a pain to deal with. Next, we have kind of the bastard child of Oracle, um, but not quite, and that is MySQL. Um, so Oracle kind of took, it's, this was an open source uh, database project that Oracle kind of took over and became the stewards of, and they've done a horrible job at it. Um, I know I'm just bashing Oracle, but I hate all of their products. and I hate what they do to companies um, because they are just the definition of too big and just bloated corpse. Um, and so here you have MySQL um, and, you know, it, it's got more, it's, you know, it's more up to date. It has better connectivity to, because B is, is technically open source than Oracle databases. However, the interface for it is just not, not my cup of tea. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it. It is just kind of like the clunkiness of the, you know, the fact that you have open source Postgres, but they're not the benefits of just ease of use of open source Postgres. Um, so not a huge, yeah, just not a fan. Um, it, it, but I don't, it doesn't have enough negatives because, it, you know, it is just a little bit better than kind of one of these legacy databases that I can't fully bash it. Um, but, you know, it's just kind of sitting in a C tier where I wouldn't use it unless you are forced to. Um, next, we have CrateDB. And CrateDB is actually a combo of uh, NoSQL and MySQL. Um, and I have found this one is really you know, distributed, easy to use. Um, it is, I don't know about the cost, um, but it is a little bit costly. But it really just allows you to scale horizontally. Um, your database is stupid easy. Uh, without jacking up your query times. Um, and it can handle all types of data. It can handle you know, vector data, geospatial JSON, but you can query it with SQL, which I think is really nice because I hate having to learn like a new query language when I'm trying to use a non-standard SQL database. And so having that built in with CrateDB definitely has kind of tilted me towards it a little bit. Um, so I would say I am a fan of Crate. Um, and so putting it up at the A tier, um, because I think it kind of, it's, it's similar to Cockroach, but where I think Cockroach takes a step back from like easy use for more security and replication, CrateDB kind of takes a step forward, where I'm not sure if that's secure as, uh, as Cockroach, but it is really hyper-scalable. Um, and then I'm not sure if this is still the logo of it, but pretend it is, and this is someone representing Google BigQuery. Uh, so Google BigQuery, I think, is pretty similar to Amazon Redshift in terms of kind of how I feel about it. Uh, it can get the job done. It you know is just a functional uh, SQL database, 
but I don't love, again, kind of the Google project way of interacting with things around it. Um, just find it a little bit clunky. I don't love the interface there. I just think it kind of hide, it obfuscates too much and like sub menus and everything. Um, so my problems are really just kind of with the Google ecosystem, Google Cloud ecosystem around it rather than with the product itself, um, if that makes sense. So again, just really not a lot of strong feelings. I don't love it, I don't hate it. Um, so I'm putting it solid on the B tier because you know people do get a lot of value of it. I know a lot of people like it. Um, so. I am kind of taking that into account and the fact that, you know, I, I understand that it does have really a place in the ecosystem. It's just not, uh, not maybe not a place in my heart. Um, and that is really, I think, all the major database providers out there that I have covered. Um, you know, I know there's obviously a billion startups and these down here are more um, are the NoSQL databases. So probably we'll make a future video on NoSQL databases. But today I just kind of wanted to focus on SQL databases, rank them and just give some fun opinions. Um, so that's all I have for you today, folks. Data guy out.